Hello everyone, today we're going to learn how to edit a basic music video in Final Cut Pro X and do the basics of how to set up Final Cut, maybe do some color corrections, some other sound corrections, any other uh, minor details. This is a basic review of how to use Final Cut Pro X and how to do the basics in editing. So let's get started. First we want to open up Final Cut Pro X. I'm editing on a Mac Mac Pro 12 core. Next thing you want to look at is how there's an untitled project here. It may have also opened the last Final Cut Pro X project you were in. In any case, you want to start a new library right here and save your project where all the files and footage is. So I've put my files into this T5 SSD drive. There's a backup on this other hard drive called P6 for projects number six. So there's duplicate files. What I want to do is edit specifically on this SSD drive because it's four times faster than this other drive here. This other drive is just for storage. Here's my project. I'm going to name this the way. Okay, now we've got two different things open in Final Cut Pro X. I'm going to quit entirely to simplify things. And here's where we've saved our new edit. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and open that up. This is being edited in the SSD drive. Let me move this over so you can see what I'm doing. What I've done is I've put all my files in different folders. The footage is here in this camera A folder. There's some, here's the music files. There's a couple files here from the drone. And then over here, there's also some of my own files for uh, different graphics, animations, and things like that. So I'm gonna take this file, the drone footage, camera A, the camera A, the drone footage, the music, and this here, and put them all into Final Cut Pro right here. Let's expand this back out so we have a full desktop to work with. The next thing that we want to do is start a new project, which is here, File, New, Project. You can also hit the command N key, that's a shortcut. Give this a name. The next step is to set up the image quality and the frame rate of your edit. Typically, I film and edit in 24 frames, just like the cinema does. There's a new project. Now, I have not filmed everything in 24 frames. Some of the footage is in 60 frames. That will allow us to slow things down and it'll be smooth. Shooting in 60 frames, if you're new to that understanding, uh, is nearly a little bit more than twice the speed as 24. And when we slow it down, it'll be very smooth. And playback will not be choppy or skipping. Okay, so we go to our edit here. And we're going to start by placing our music track down. The next step we'll do is we'll right click and lift it off the storyline. This places kind of a separation bar between the video, which will be up here, and the audio, which will be down here. The next step is we can expand this out to put our signature or our graphics at the end. This is my company signature here. Now we'll close that up. So this will be our entire edit right here. This is the entire music video. I'm gonna hit the command button and the plus button to just zoom in a little bit to the timeline. And that'll give us a close up of what we're doing for those that are new on Final Cut. Next is to go in and place every scene into where you want it in this audio music file. I'm going to go ahead and do that now and we'll come back. 
Okay, so we're back. Now we're going to look at what we've done. I've placed all the scenes down on the timeline. There's some gaps in here and I'll explain why in a second. First thing we want to do is remove all of this audio out of these tracks that have audio in them. These were just uh, audio from the camera. I'm going to highlight everything. And go up to the audio setting here and bring everything down to zero. Now, as, as you can see, everything is uh, completely muted in all the tracks. All the scenes have no sound. The next thing I want to do is play back the first scene here. And what I want to do is fill in this gap by slowing this scene down even slower. We're editing on 24 frames. This scene was shot at 60 frames. That allows us to slow it down by just 40% of the speed. So I'm gonna click on that. I'm gonna go here to this little speed dial and slow it down. There's some choices here, but the one I want is 40%. So I'm gonna go to custom and type in 40% of the speed. and hit enter. All right, so that has made the scene much longer and that's going to allow us to move these other files and these other, that's going to allow us to move these other scenes over. Let's play that back. As we play it back, we can see there's a little bit of camera shake the camera is rolling on a dolly and the ground isn't completely level so there's a little bit of shake and what we'll do is we'll click on this scene and we're going to smooth that out by going up here to this little film strip and moving down to stabilize. Now Final Cut Pro is going to go in there. You see these little bars working. It's going to render and stabilize that shot and make it smoother. As Final Cut's working, let's go to the next scene. We'll go to this one here. It's her perspective of her walking. We'll move all these over a little bit so we can slow this scene down as well. We click on the scene, go to the little speedometer thing, custom, and type in 40% speed. Hit enter, and there we go. Some of these scenes are longer than we want. We'll trim them down later. This is done rendering, so let's play it back. So what I can do is I can do a little trick in here. It's playing slow. I can cut it right there and I can cut it right here. I'm going to make this super fast real quick. Go to the speed dial. I'm going to speed it up. And then I'm going to place this one here. I'm going to slow that one down to 40%. All right, let's zoom in a little bit to this edit. I'm going to hit the command key and the plus button just bring it in a little closer. Final Cut is rendering this right now. Okay, I've let Final Cut Pro render that. I'm gonna play it back and see how it looks. Now we're gonna place the next scene up against this one. That's enough of that scene. Now we're going to go to the next scene. Now this is from the drone and there's a little bit of gap here in the footage. The drone is filming in a little bit smaller image quality. 
we look at the information on the drone, it is at 3640, but the timeline is at 4096 by 2160. So we need to expand this footage of the drone and go here and increase the size that should fill in and, and make it fit the color space. And then again here, same thing, we've got some gaps here because the scene is 16 by 9, but we're editing in a 17 by 9 workspace. So we're going to click on the scene and make it a little bit larger from the drone. Okay, so that fits in correctly now. All right, let's bring the next scenes over. All right, so she's struggling with the chains. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make this scene slow motion. I'm going to click on it. Go to the speed. Type in 40%. And now we can move these over to fit. Final Cut is rendering that out. All right, so here's the next scene. I'm going to take that from here, try to match it up with what's happening from the other scene. And here's the next scene. What I'll do is I'll slow this down as well. 40% speed. I'm going to slow this scene down as well. 40%. All right, so all these scenes have been slowed down. We'll let Final Cut render those out. Okay, the next scene is going in place. And now she's walking up the path. And I will slow this one down as well. Starting from here. Click on the speed dial, type in 40%. Let's play that back. We'll let this render. There's multiple areas that this film will be in slow motion, so I'll do that now in my own creative ways, and then we can come back to see what the edit looks like after. Okay, now that we've got all of our scenes in place, I'm going to do some color correcting and color grading. The best way to do color grading without a lot of complication is to download the LUT color grade file from the camera manufacturer. I filmed most of my footage on a Fujifilm X-T3. You just go to the Fujifilm website and you download this file here. It will go into your download folder and here will be all the LUT settings. Another thing you can do is load a program called Motion VFX. There are free, it's a free software for having different color grading LUT settings directly. 
Once you've loaded your LUT settings for your particular camera, they'll be in this browser here. And what you can do is all the scenes that use that camera, you're gonna to wanna to drop this into the scene. Okay, I've placed the LUT color plugin into each scene. I'm gonna close this browser. Now we can manually go in there and color grade. We click on the scene and we can choose from the presets. Here's the one for Fuji right here. We hit okay. And now it is color, now it's color graded this footage for us. Let's pull up our scopes and see how things are looking. Here's our color scopes. You can also hit command seven next time. Here's our levels right here. Blacks and whites are up here at the top. If we go to our little color triangle right here, we can make further adjustments. I'm gonna bring the whites up a little bit. I'm gonna bring the blacks down a little bit. Let's go to the next scene. Zoom in a little bit. We go back to our film strip and load the presets for Fuji. Go back to the color triangle, make some mild adjustments to the brightness and to the blacks. Go to the next scene. Go to our film strip and we'll do this for all the scenes and I'm going to do that now and do all the color correcting and brightness levels to match what I feel is appropriate and what looks good. Color grading is something that everybody does a little bit differently. It is an artistic appeal. So there really is no truly wrong or right way. There are ideal ways to do things, to make things look a little more saturated and to give certain color looks, but there is no right and wrong. This is where you use your creative uh, mindset. Okay, I've gone in and done all the color correction and color grading in each of the scenes. I can turn off the scope now by hitting command and the number seven. And everything is pretty much in place with color. Now it's time to place our transitions in between the scenes. Some of the scenes will hard cut to the next. Other ones, I want to put a mild transition in there. There's a few scenes that don't quite match up correctly. And I'm going to put a transition in. There's also a little bit of there's some camera shake in this scene, so I'm going to click on that and stabilize it by going here to this film strip and going down to stabilize. Final Cut will render that scene and smooth it out a little bit more. Let's add our transitions while Final Cut is doing that in the background. So right, right here where she changes from one pair of clothes to this angelic look. I'm gonna add a little transition right here. We go to our browser here for transitions. So I'll click on here and I'll put in flash transition. Close this browser window. So what happens with Final Cut is when you place a transition, you can't move things around. 
otherwise it breaks things apart. So transitions are generally the very last thing I do in the edit. Once transitions go in, it kind of locks these scenes together. This transition is a little bit large and kind of too long, so I'm going to only make it a few frames. There we go. It'll be a quick flash and then she'll be in her new outfit. We'll let that render. Okay, so let's play that back. What I'll do is I'll add another transition here and we can just hit the command key and then the letter T. And that does a general and very common fade. So you can add a fade in by hitting command T or you can put in custom transitions by going to this browser window and going through all the different options in here. While that's rendering, we can double check our audio levels. Audio levels are here on the right. They should be just below zero. So anytime you're editing music, you'll want the audio levels at the highest areas. Let's zoom back out so you can see the audio levels here. The audio levels are up and down in different parts of the song, but here's the loudest segment. The very loudest segment of your audio when doing music videos or any kind of music track needs to be way up at zero. So if you play this back, You can see this audio track is correct and it's right at the zero mark at its peaks. All right, it's time to add some titles in the beginning, title our video. Let's move the beginning here. We're gonna go up to this top corner for titles. There's a lot of titles to pick from. You can pick the one that you prefer. All right, so grab our title and put it here on the timeline. I'm gonna shrink it down to fit the first scene. All right, let's go look at our title. It's in the center of the screen, so we're gonna go over here to our film strip and we're gonna adjust the title by clicking on it and choosing to relocate it to the part of the screen we want. And then we're gonna move it down, move it over a little bit more. A little bit down more. Let's label our music video. Our video is done. Hopefully you enjoyed this edit and you learned a few things. I'll be doing other videos on YouTube as well. Please subscribe, hit the like button hit the notification bell, and I'll see you at the next one. Thanks for joining me. I can't find a way. Hello? Are you there? I can't find a way. I can't.